SpaceX is gearing up for the seventh integrated flight test of Starship, marking another milestone in the development of the world's most powerful rocket system. Elon Musk has confirmed that the launch is targeted for Friday, January 10, with teams now in the final stages of preparation for this historic test. Over the past few weeks, the focus has been on ensuring the launch infrastructure, including the launch pad and the launch tower, is ready for the mission. After ensuring the site was fully prepared, SpaceX moved Super Heavy Booster 14 to the launch site on Monday, December 30th. Before its rollout, the booster underwent weeks of rigorous system checks and hardware modifications inside the Mega Bay to ensure it was flight ready. Key updates to Booster 14 include the installation of a hot staging ring and the addition of extra stringers around its common dome for structural reinforcement. The need for structural upgrades on Booster 14 stems from the unique characteristics of Ship 33, Booster 14's partner for this mission. Ship 33 represents the first Block 2 variant of Starship, featuring numerous structural and design improvements, including larger propellant tanks capable of holding more propellants, increasing its mass significantly. Moreover, Ship 33 is 1.8 meters taller than previous models due to an extra stainless steel ring section, which further adds to the weight. The additional stringers on Booster 14 are engineered to distribute this increased load more evenly, enhancing the booster's rigidity and safeguarding against structural stress. After Booster 14 arrived at the launch site, it was moved towards the launch pad, placed in between the tower arms, and gently lifted and placed atop the orbital launch mount. Next in line is Ship 33, which is currently undergoing pre-launch preparations inside Megabay 2. Once Ship 33 is rolled out and stacked atop the booster, SpaceX will proceed to a full-stack propellant load test. This critical test will serve as the final verification of the rocket's structural integrity and system performance before liftoff. With the FAA license already secured for this flight, the remaining procedural steps, including notices of launch confirmation, are expected imminently. The nose cone payload bay assembly of Starship 35 was recently transported into Megabay 2 for integration with the tank sections, offering a glimpse of an intriguing design feature. Following Flight 6 in November, Elon Musk mentioned that SpaceX would attempt a Starship catch with a launch tower arms after one more ocean landing. However, it seems the timeline has shifted, with the first ship catch now planned for Flight 9, which will involve Ship 35. During the recent rollout, reinforced square holes were observed on either side of Ship 35, located just below the nose cone. These openings are believed to be designated for the installation of ship catch lugs, which will engage with the tower arms during the landing attempt. While the exact mechanism of these lugs remains uncertain, there are possible approaches SpaceX could take. One option is a deployable design, like the Falcon 9's landing legs, although on a smaller scale given their different functions and reduced structural requirements. If deploying, the lugs would need to be both lightweight and robust, with mechanisms to extend and lock in place safely before landing. Alternatively, the lugs could be permanent, non-retractable components integrated into the ship's exterior, resembling the fixed catch structures on the Super Heavy boosters. If this approach is used, the lugs would likely include additional thermal shielding to withstand the intense plasma heating generated during the ship's high-speed re-entry into the atmosphere. Once Ship 35 is outfitted with the lugs, more details about their operation and functionality will become clear. What do you think? What specific design modifications might SpaceX need to implement to ensure the ship catching lugs can endure re-entry heating and perform seamlessly during the catch? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Super Heavy Booster 15 conducted its cryogenic proof testing at Massey's this past week. The first round of tests, conducted on November 27, focused on the booster's methane tank. The tank was filled with cryogenic liquid nitrogen and maintained in a fully loaded state for four hours to verify its structural integrity under cryogenic conditions and ensure the reliability of the plumbing. The following day, November 28, saw a comprehensive full-scale cryo-proof test. Over 12 hours, the team conducted multiple tanking and detanking cycles on both the methane and oxygen tanks, culminating in a final full tank test. During this test, hydraulic rams on the test stand exerted force on the booster's aft section, simulating the stresses of flight. This allowed engineers to collect vital data on how the booster would hold up under real-world launch conditions. After successfully concluding the cryo-proof test campaign, Booster 15 was transported back to the production facility, where it entered the Megabay for checks and inspections. Before it entered into the Megabay, Booster 15 received scaffolding frames around its common dome area. These preparations indicate that Booster 15 will soon receive additional exterior stringers, 
similar to those added to Booster 14, to accommodate the increased weight of the Starship Block 2 upper stage. Engine installation is the next major step for Booster 15, after which it will be prepared for static fire testing at the launch site. Meanwhile, its counterpart, Ship 34, is currently fully stacked inside Megabay 2 and is getting ready for cryo-proof testing. Together, Booster 15 and Ship 34 are slated to fly on the 8th integrated test flight, projected for late February or early March, based on the current operational timeline. The construction of the second launch pad is making rapid progress alongside preparations for Flight 7. Each day brings visible progress, particularly in the flame trench digging and the installation of commodity pipes. Key components for the Pad B double bucket flame deflector have started arriving at Starbase. This innovative double bucket design will channel the exhaust plume more effectively during engine ignition, managing both the thermal load and acoustic shock from Starship launches. The Pad B launch tower is also seeing remarkable development. Teams are reinforcing the tower sections, focusing on enhancing the strength of joints and weld areas. Work on the tower arms is well underway, with a dedicated assembly jig being prepared to streamline the integration process. Both the carriage system and the arms are undergoing final preparations at the Sanchez site before transportation to the launch pad. The arms will first be mounted onto the carriage system using this jig to ensure proper alignment and secure attachment. Once fully assembled, the arms will be carefully lifted and installed onto the tower. Simultaneously, the orbital launch mount for Pad B is taking shape at Sanchez. Teams have installed water deluge plates atop the launch mount, although welding and plumbing work for this high-flow water system are still pending. These plates play a critical role in protecting the pad infrastructure by dispersing water during engine ignition to absorb heat and dampen acoustic energy. Once the primary structure of the mount is completed, internal components, including the booster hold-down clamps and quick disconnect mechanisms for the outer 20 engines of the booster, will be installed. Alongside these structural advancements, the tank farm is being expanded to support future launches from Pad B. Construction teams are diligently working to integrate new horizontal and vertical storage tanks into the existing setup, with ongoing concrete work to expand the tank farm pad. This expansion is necessary to house additional propellant storage tanks expected in the coming days. Moreover, the excavation for tunnels and the laying of propellant delivery pipelines from the tank farm to Pad B are proceeding smoothly. If all continues according to plan, without major setbacks or unexpected issues, Pad B could be fully operational and ready for its first launch by mid to late 2025. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. The Indian Space Research Organization successfully launched the space docking experiment, Space Dex mission, from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikotar on December 30th atop a PSLV rocket. The mission aims to demonstrate critical technologies for orbital rendezvous and docking. The rocket's ascent was flawless, with each stage separating as planned, guiding the spacecraft into a low Earth orbit. Eventually, the two satellites, designated Spacecraft A and Spacecraft B, were deployed into a predetermined low Earth orbit at an altitude of 470 kilometers and an inclination of 55 degrees. Each spacecraft weighs approximately 220 kilograms, with spacecraft A acting as the chaser and B serving as the target for the autonomous docking operations. After their separation, the chaser and target began rifting apart to create a planned distance of about 20 kilometers in a phase referred to as far rendezvous. In the days following this initial separation, a series of controlled maneuvers will be executed to progressively close the distance between the two spacecraft. During this phase, the chaser will pause at specific hold points to allow for safety checks, system validations, and recalibrations to ensure a successful final approach. At a distance of just 3 meters, the chaser will perform a final safety check before initiating the docking sequence. Once all systems are confirmed operational, the chaser will dock with the target as early as January 7th. This successful docking demonstration will validate a suite of rendezvous and docking sensors and showcase India's Bardia docking system, which adheres to international docking system standards. Post-docking, ISRO plans to demonstrate electrical power transfer between the two spacecraft. This capability is vital for future modular missions that may require shared power resources during collaborative operations in space. After completing their docked operations and validating power transfer capabilities, the spacecraft will in-dock and operate independently while continuing their mission objectives for up to two years. The spacecraft is equipped with payloads for standalone mission phases. These payloads will provide high-resolution images to aid in natural resource monitoring, support vegetation studies, and measure the on-orbit radiation environment, offering various applications. 
The Space Dex mission represents a significant advancement in India's space capabilities, particularly in space docking technology. It lays the groundwork for future missions that involve complex operations with multiple spacecraft working together. Notably, upcoming missions such as Chandrayaan 4, aimed at lunar sample return, and the Bharatiya Antaraksha Station, which is planned for completion by 2035, will rely heavily on these docking technologies. Stay tuned as we continue to follow the progress of this Bay Dex mission with updates on the docking demonstration in our next episode. SpaceX successfully launched four Astranus microsatellites from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on December 29, atop a Falcon 9 rocket. This launch came after a dramatic abort on December 21, where the Falcon 9's Merlin engines ignited, but the launch was halted moments later. The abort was triggered by an issue detected during the mid-ignition phase. In response, SpaceX replaced the booster stage with another unit, which postponed the launch until the successful attempt on December 29. Approximately 35 minutes after liftoff, the Falcon 9's upper stage deployed all four satellites into a geosynchronous transfer orbit at an altitude of about 36,000 kilometers above Earth. These satellites, each roughly the size of a washing machine, are built by San Francisco-based Astranus and are engineered to deliver robust satellite communication services to a diverse range of customers. Two of them, NuView Alpha and NuView Bravo, will serve the Colorado-based firm Manuvu for in-flight connectivity on planes, ships, or other transportation. Another, called Ajila, will be a dedicated communication satellite for the Philippines, addressing regional connectivity needs. The fourth satellite, known as Utilitasat, is unique from the other three because it is designed to adjust its orbital position to serve multiple customers over its lifetime. Its first assignment is with APCO Networks in Mexico, aiming to improve internet connectivity in underserved areas. This launch represents a pivotal moment for Stranus, signaling its evolution from operating a single satellite to managing a multi-satellite network. The company has set ambitious goals, including the launch of over 100 satellites by 2030. Among its future offerings is the Omega satellite, an upgraded model designed to provide scalable and affordable satellite communication solutions globally. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.